Scott, I just noticed um, Jerry has a question here. Do you have any tips for naming a pop? So Jerry, do you want to pop on and uh, let's talk about it? Cause that's like a pretty vague question. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I have a tip. I have, my tip is get on a blab with Gordon and Scott and talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if you're still there or not. It depends on what your topic is. And then it also depends on what your audience is looking for. So your topic could be totally different than what your audience is looking for. They may not know that they need your thing. Yes. And here he comes. Ladies and gentlemen, please uh, give a warm welcome to Jerry. Hey, Jerry. Jerry, how you doing? Hey. How's it going? How you doing today, guys? Doing yeah. great. So no, I uh, definitely appreciate the time. So that's where it's, again, the... The, the the stickiness of all the tools and everything getting out there, just taking that first step to get started. And that's where, again, uh, listening to a few experts in the space saying, you know, being mindful of a few tips or things that could be an issue for you as you start off on this venture. And that's where, again, just the negative self, self-doubt, oh, I need to get it perfect the first time. So that's where, again, in my head, it's yeah. How bold do I want to be again? If I want to shift my business, I'm still trying to refine my message and, and what I yes. exactly you, you know, do. Your message never ends. The refining never ends. Mm. You constantly be refining your message because you're going to grow. You're going to change. Your message is going to grow and it's going to change. <laughs> and uh, the, yeah. So, I mean, in the beginning, you want to have a good message and, and a good, you know, what your USP and what you're about and everything for sure. But, you know, there comes a point where you just say, this is, you know, I passed it by Scott. I passed it by Gordon. They gave me some suggestions. It's okay. It looks good. I, I like it. So go with it as opposed to perfection, right? Which mm. is impossible to, to achieve. Yeah. Um, the thing with the blog is you can, aside from the domain name of the blog, you can, which you could change by just canceling it and getting another one. Uh, nothing when it comes to naming your blog is permanent. Okay. What may happen is you may name it, want to name it something else and your audience doesn't go along with you. You can change the name if you want, Jerry, but we yep. still call it blah, 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 blah. Right. <laughs> and it just evol evolves over time. Right. Yeah. Jerry, what so, do you mind in 30 seconds? What do you do? What's your background? What do you do? Oh, I'm a CPA, CMA. So full-time job I had uh, up the financial reporting for a public company on the side. I have a coaching business. I launched okay. Career Leadership University. So millennial leadership, as you nice. discussed, is something ethical superhero creation is the type of the space I'm trying to uh, carve out for myself. There's actually another CPA CMA on here as well, Dwayne Richards. I don't know if you'll get a chance to hop on. But uh, do you have a yes. podcast now? Like, do you have, a, are you thinking of podcast? No, and that's one of my earlier questions as far as time, where again, YouTube, most people are viewing for a few minutes. And again, knowing that if it's okay, content, stop for a second, stop for a second, because that's a great point right there. You just made the number one point for why you should have a podcast. Because YouTube, mm -hmm. when you're on YouTube, you're being distracted by things popping up yes. from, your, you know, Facebook, you're also the, whatever's on the side there, other videos, whatever's going on. A lot, not, not even going to say most, but a lot of the consumption of the podcast comes from people doing something else already. In other words, they're going to be listening to you while they're driving to work. They're going to be listening to you while they're walking the dog. They're going to be listening to you while they're working out in the gym. They're going to be working with you, listening to you when they're dusting or doing the laundry or mo not mowing the lawn. That's a little bit too loud, but you know, Basically, that's the nice thing about audio podcasts is it's, it's the only thing that is not demanding 100% of your audience attention. Mm -hmm. So you can take, you, you do the video. Like if you, if you were to say, Scott, what's the perfect process for me creating content? Mm -hmm. Okay. I would say do a Google Hangout, record it, download it. If you want to edit it, edit in YouTube, take the audio put it through some, you know, find some program that extracts it. I forget what the name of the one I, I mean, this, I don't want to get into the details, but you extract it, put it up as your podcast, send it off to the Philippines for someone to transcribe it, 
work with that transcriber so that they start removing stuff that you don't want, like ums and things, and put it up on your blog. And then take some of the gems that are in there and tweet them out. Some other gems, make them into a, a status update. Put them on, you know, have a Facebook group. In the Facebook group, you post a link to your your YouTube video, to your podcast, to your blog post. Mm. And, you know, there you, you know, in there you want to drive all the traffic to all the places, right? Because mm-hmm. you don't know if someone's going to find you on Facebook, be one of your friends on Facebook or a friend of a friend on Facebook. And then they go to your YouTube and then right. in the YouTube description, it's see us on Facebook. Here's our podcast. Here's our Twitter, all those sort of things. And the beauty of it is just as an aside, because, wow, that's a lot of work. Right. YouTube has a template default thing. So you can take a whole bunch of text and stick it in. So you never have to type in your Twitter handle and your podcast URL all that, more than once. You just do it once, and it sticks it automatically into YouTube. Mm-hmm. In my podcast world, we have a thing called Snippet, same thing. You just put all this content in, and then when you go to do your live episode, you just click Snippets at the bottom, and if you have more than one, you pick the one you want, and it automatically populates. Now, you don't want to have that as your only content, but that's the basic stuff you want in every show and it doesn't matter if it's on youtube or a podcast or even in your blog you know usually on the blog you'll see it on the side as opposed to as part of the post um and then it's just one or two lines or a couple paragraphs you know today jerry and gordon were talking about na 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 and you're done right it's a nice title and and away you go so uh, and then you can get more involved if you want right you can get graphic artists putting a picture of you and jerry you and Gordon, I mean, you know, doing something or whatever, like, but that's not what we're talking about. We're just talking about the, like the bare bones. So yes. once you have it set up, it can be very quick and very easy. And 10, 15 minutes is lots for a YouTube video and a podcast. It's amazing. 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 So, you know, I, I want to welcome the folks who just joined us. Uh, again, it's well, thanks, guys. I'll, I'll jump off. Thank, no thank you, Jerry. Thank, thank you, Jerry. Okay. Uh, Let us know how you do. Great. So I just want to again uh, welcome everyone on here. You got Scott Patton and myself, Gordon So, who's your uh, co-host for our first My Podcast World uh, blab. And, and it's interesting because Scott, I think this hey, is the yeah. second blab. This could be the second or third blab yeah. on the mind. Yeah, I'm, I'm forcing you against your will to be yeah. out there and talk about you know coming outside of your comfort zone. Um, I'm usually the person behind the scenes, so I don't really like to be seen. So even um, you know, You're such on, a liar. <laughs> being on here, right? I try and give a course on reverse marketing in Toronto, and every th- 10 minutes, Gordon's <laughs> pushing me off the stage. No, 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 wait, Scott, I want to talk about this. <laughs> uh, no, that's amazing. Well, reverse marketing, we'll talk about that another day, folks. If you guys don't know Scott, Scott, uh, in my opinion, um, is the godfather of podcasting and also teaching clients how to um, how to make money online. And if you haven't had a chance to meet Scott, you know, reach out to him afterwards. Because, Scott, you've, um, I hope you don't mind me sharing this. I know in the last two months, you've been in Belize, you've been in Panama, you've been in Colombia, you've been in Hawaii, you've been in Maui. I don't know if I've missed any other places, but that to me is the true. They were a little longer than two months ago, but anyway. That to me is the true <laughs> lifestyle of, uh, of an internet marketer, right? Because there's a lot of people who talk about, driving traffic, getting leads and making money online. I know you know you said it's more than two months ago, but you were gone for how many months? Well, ten weeks. Ten weeks, right? That's a long time. Yeah. Right? And I'm jealous because I remember doing Skype calls with you and you're sitting you're either on a beach or you're somewhere in, in South America and you're still well, building I'm always houses. mean to you, Gordon, because <laughs> I made sure whenever we did a Skype call I had a beautiful backdrop that I could show off. <laughs> yes. Yes. Now, Barbara so, just said, um, answer to Tim's, Jerry's question earlier is, if you're going to blog, your name should be meaningful uh, to what you're doing, which is um, which is true. Yes. Scott, yes. do you have another question? You are. In- I, know, I was just going to say hi to Tim. Tim's in Queensland, Australia. Good to see you, Tim. Oh. And, he, and he talked about preparing show notes, the most time consuming. Uh, yeah, you want to avoid writing a novel, Tim, if you can. And what I like doing is, what I said is I have a default in YouTube and I have a default in a snippet in my podcast world. And that's where the majority of the text goes in. And then I just spend, you know, five minutes putting about two paragraphs of content that, that isn't really what's in it as opposed to a teaser of what they're going to get from listening to it. And, uh, 
yeah, so that's uh, that's that's my advice on that. Very nice. Um, let's see, Scott. I was just going to mention about my podcast world, uh, just very very quickly. Sure. I know um, you know my business partner Randy Goodman, who is um, the founder of the Toronto Women's Expo. She has her show called the Empowerment Radio Show, and um, I didn't follow it too much in terms of um, the logistics, but Randy was telling me a while back that her hosting was about $10 a month. So I always thought, of, you know, we're paying $10 a month for hosting. And we probably were at one point, but as our usage and our bandwidth went up, uh, one day Randy said, well, we're paying $80 a month for our for our, our hosting for, for a podcast. I thought, wait a minute, wasn't it $10 a month? She says it was $10 a month. Now it's $80 a month. And by the way, we're up here in Canada, so eighty dollars US is like about a million dollars to us, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. So, needless to say, when I found out that my podcast world uh, has a has a package where it's under a hundred dollars, like ninety nine dollars, and you get unlimited hosting for a year, could you talk a little bit about that? Because uh, I had some people say to me, "Well, wouldn't the quality of the service be terrible if it's only ninety nine dollars a year?" Well, it would be if Scott was delivering the service. Scott's not, fortunately, Amazon is. And I think uh, the reason that we use Amazon was we figured they're a multi-billion dollar a year company. Uh, They're totally online and dependent upon their internet connection. So if there was anybody in the world, and at that time, by the way, because this was 2009, there was no Google Drive. I don't think Dropbox was really around. Uh, Amazon Drive didn't exist. So there wasn't like I had a lot of alternatives. But Mm. if you had to depend on somebody, you know, who is it going to be? Well, it's not Microsoft, I'm sorry. Apple, perhaps, Google, perhaps, Amazon, perhaps, eBay, perhaps, and then it kind of drops off. So um, when I realized that I could have the podcast episodes hosted on Amazon, and Amazon would do a really interesting thing. Let's suppose, for example, that you're in New York, and you have a large following in Australia. Now just think, it's on a server in New York or somewhere nearby in New York, because that's where you are, and it's got to go all the way to Australia. So these files are, you know, three, four, five, six, ten, twenty big megabytes. And that's a lot. That's a lot, right? And it's a lot of bandwidth. What Amazon does is they say, oh, there's a lot of people listening down here, down under. Sorry, Tim, <laughs> I should point up there. And they're going to take the file and they're going to stick it in their server in Australia. So now you get it faster, quicker, easier, better quality, all the rest of it. And it's like, mm. I wouldn't even have thought of that. So these guys, they look after the bandwidth, they look after the storage, they look after the delivery of your precious podcasts. I don't have to be concerned about it at all. And that's what I was looking for because the Got reason it. that I did my podcast world was because I was on another service and unfortunately they were dreadfully slow Mm. and I had no idea. And then they'd be fast and then they'd be slow and then they'd be fast. Then they'd be slow. And I decided that they just had servers in their basement. And when the server filled up and everything slowed down, they waited till they had enough money to buy another server, added it on and away they went. I don't know how this stuff works. Don't want to know how this stuff works. I just want it to work. So Mm. I found, you know, for the last eight years, six, seven years, whatever it's been, uh, it's been no, no one has ever said, oh, Scott, I uploaded this and everyone's telling me they can't download it. No, it's, it's worked uh, nice and smooth. And I s- separated the delivery of the podcast from the management of the podcast. Because nice. in my mind, that was the, this problem. That's amazing. You know, Scott, I know, um, you know, Empowerment Radio Show, we're at over 100 episodes. So I was, I gotta, gotta admit, I was a little bit skeptical myself. So, about two weeks ago, we put together a new WordPress installation. And I wanted to make sure that we could actually um, take our podcast and put it on this new um, uh, website. Mm-hmm. And it worked. Worked like a charm. <laughs> oh, good. Right? The audio player was amazing. The, the show was amazing. And, and I, I can't recommend it. Um, I can honestly recommend it, right? Why pay a thousand dollars a year for hosting when you can do it for hundred dollars to get your message out there? I'm right. looking at a, we got a couple, couple questions. questions. Yes. So the first one was: Is there an ideal length of a podcast? And I would say twenty minutes. 
And okay. I would say 20 minutes for two reasons, neither of which are necessarily true. In fact, people argue with me about them all the time. <laughs> so take this for what it's worth. The first one was in 2006, someone like AOL did a study. It wasn't AOL, but someone like them. And they discovered that people on computers were interrupted every 20 minutes. Now, I would suggest 10 years later, it's every 30 seconds, not every 20 minutes. But at that point, my argument was you're going to be listening to this on your computer, probably, unless you'd burn it onto a CD, put it on a CD player, because really the iPods were in the infancy and all the stuff we have now we didn't have then. And so if you're on a computer listening, the chances are that they were going to get interrupted in 20 minutes. So, you know, make it 20 minutes. Then what I discovered was uh, the average commute in North America is 20 minutes. Hmm. So it was like, oh, okay, so just do it so that they can listen to the whole show by the time they get to work. And of course, then it was, my commute's an hour and a half. <laughs> so, you know, depends where you are and where your audience is. And then the hmm. third thing, if I can remember it, was um, TED Talks. Hmm. Guess how long you're supposed to talk on a TED Talk? 18 minutes. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so close enough to 20. So that's that if you were looking for ideal, that's what I would say, you know, and really the actual ideal would be as long as you can keep your audience engrossed in what it is that you have to say while respecting the fact that they have a life and they can't be on for 24 hours. So, yeah. and you can say, you know, people can take the podcast anywhere, right? They're driving, they're going for a run. It's got yeah. my, um, you know, my, one of my daughters just finished uh, university. And I was asking her, what do you listen to when you drive to work? And really, I what I was looking for was, I was really curious, like, what type of music she was listening to on the radio. And she surprised me and said, Dad, I'm actually listening to a podcast, a podcast nice. when I'm driving to work. So I thought, whoa, you know, my ego went up. I thought maybe she was listening to my podcast, right? <laughs> so well, Dad, I'm, list I'm listening to the Gilmore guys. So for you know for the ladies who are on um, on our blab today, or you know having having two girls and my wife um, here, I I play every episode of the Gilmore Girls. If you can relate to that, so I said to my daughter, "Don't you mean the Gilmore Girls?" She says, "No, Dad, I mean the Gilmore guys." And sure <laughs> enough, two guys have started a podcast called the Gilmore Guys, and they're co it's just a review, like their take on the Gilmore Girls. And their podcast has taken on such an incredible life of its own. They've now been um, having live shows, like the Gilmore Guys shows, all across the U.S. Sure, you get and, booked. And they get booked. Like, they're actually booking out all their events. Isn't that incredible? That That's you could amazing. actually take a podcast, create raving fans, and then actually monetize it. And uh, yeah. If you're time. a comedian, they won't put you in Yuck Yucks unless you have a podcast. Really? I didn't know that. Yep. Yeah, wow. they'll say, what's your podcast? We want to listen to a few of your shows, see if you're funny. And wow. if they don't have one, they say, they'll come back when you do. Oh, wow. there was one more question. Do you think Blab can serve a dual purpose podcast and video content? Absolutely. Hmm. You uh, you may want to tighten it up a little bit, depending on um, depending, depending on your audience and depending on how you uh how you, you know what you want to do your own personal preferences right hmm. like i don't really have a problem at all this is a live show i'm going to put a little intro at the beginning i'm going to put some music i'm going to put a music at the end and i'm going to take the audio out of this video and i'm going to pop it up on my podcast and you know i think that's fine other people who are going no 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 we should cut out jerry and we should do this and we should move stuff around and it's like i don't have enough time in the day as it is so, uh, but I think that's the perfect thing to do. Get on a Blab or get on a Google Hangout. You've got your video done and then extract the audio. Now you've got two of the three. You just need to transcribe it. You've got, or you could even, yeah, I don't want to get into the technical stuff. There are other ways you could do it, but they're not usually as good as getting a transcriber. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Scott, um, I know we mentioned to some of the folks um, that we're hopping on through some of our communication that um, you may have um, a couple of courses, like podcasting courses that you could, um, hope I'm not getting you getting into trouble here. I, I think no, you said- I'm glad you reminded me because I forgot. Yeah, you're gonna give it a, 
give away a couple of your courses for free. Is that true? Yes. I'm, I'm going to give, yep. first of all, if you don't know how to podcast, I'm going to give you a course that's going to show you how to podcast. Secondly, okay. I just launched today a course with uh, Daniel Hall, who is the real fast guy. It's how to do something real fast. He's just mm. a great branding. And I've known Daniel for probably, well, I've been associated. I don't like, I personally know him probably six or seven years and I've been in, interacting with him for 10. And um, he originally didn't, not originally, but my original connection with him was give speeches as you cruise the world mm -hmm. or cruise the world free by talking. And I thought, oh, I would really like to do that, really like to do that. And then I went on a couple of cruises, saw the speakers and thought they're not really that good. I could be better. But do I really want to? do that as opposed to just enjoy the cruise and even though they're only on for a couple hours a day mm. and so I moved on to other things but originally that was like oh yeah I'd love to be well plus it was six months at sea and mm. I decided after a few weeks on a, on a cruise ship I was that was enough I wanted to get off so uh, but you know the thing is is you try stuff and you learn and then you decide yes or no right if I hadn't gone through that process I might still be thinking I wanted to spend six months at sea and you know resenting the fact that i had now i'm quite at peace with spending more time on land but i'll get you those links i'll put them in the live chat for everybody yes